Okay, uh, today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some practice for our um, more trigonometry and we're going to look at some application questions that are going to require your use. And so the problem with the application questions most kids have isn't so much that they don't know how to do the trig, it's often that they don't know how to set things up. So we're going to have to be careful in setting things up and we're going to obviously make use of our triangle decision tree as well to help us figure out what exactly we need to do when. So this is going to be trig practice and applications, trig practice and applications. Okay. So there we go. Trig practice and applications. Uh, so imagine that we had the following scenario. Imagine that we had two people that were out uh, in boats on the lake and the two people meet up in their boats. Okay. Um, and then they decide they, you know, they've had their meeting and off they go. So here we've got two boats. Yay for art. Okay. There's two boats. Um, and they're going to depart. Well, one of them goes in this direction up here. So that boat heads that direction, this boat, and they're in the same place, this boat, the other second boat, it heads off in this direction. Now, uh, the boat that's going northerly, it is moving at, let's do, you know, 1.5 meters. Ooh, why are you doing that? Stop that. Nope, stop that. There we go. Now, it's going to be moving at 1.5 meters per second. And the boat that's going this direction, it's a little bit faster, it's able to go at 2 meters per second. Now, the angle that the two depart, boats depart at, right, so that angle that they leave at right there is, it is 100 degrees. My question is, after two minutes, how far apart are the boats? Okay, so we want to know, so they started in the same position, here they started down here, and after two minutes, um, how far apart are they? So what we're really asking to find is we're asking for what the measurement of this distance right here is. Okay, so there is, you know, what I'm going to be working with. So, ooh, did it again. Um, so what we're going to have is we would like to know um, what that exact distance is. So uh, there's a little bit we need to do. Notice that this says that this boat's moving in meters per second and per second. And in the question, it says after two minutes. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how far those boats were able to get. Well, we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. That means in two minutes, there are 120 seconds. Okay, so we're going to take these measurements and we're going to multiply by 120. And that will tell us how far these respective distances are. So 1.5 times 120. Well, 1 times 120 is 120. A half times 120 is 60. Add that up, it's going to be 180 meters. So this side length here is 180 meters meters. This one, 2 times 120 is going to be 240 meters. So now what we've got is we have a triangle with two sides, an angle, and an x. So that's lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to think and we're going to go through our triangle decision tree. Do we know two angles? No, clearly we don't. Uh, do we know uh, if it's a right angle triangle? Well, it's got 100 degrees here, so I, it can't possibly be a right angle triangle because those two angles there have to be less than 80 degrees when we add them up. Do we have a known angle opposite a known side? No, we don't. So that means we're going to have to use cosine law, right? So I'm going to write out my cosine law. I know it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of uppercase c. Okay, so I'm going to then think about cosine law. Cosine law says you have to put the C on the angle you know or want to know. Well, this is the angle I know, and I don't know anything about those, and I don't want to know about those. So here is my C. And so that's going to be little c. And then this could be A and B, meaning that this is A and B. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to fill this all in. So C is X. 
So we're going to have that x squared is equal to a squared, which is a big number. So it's going to be 240 squared plus b, which is 180 squared minus 2 times 240 times 180 uh, times the cosine of uppercase c, but c is that angle. So it's the cosine of 100. Okay. And so that's lovely. So what we have then is x squared is equal to this big relationship here. Well, with cosine law, I've mentioned it before, but I'll remind you, if what we're looking for is the variable over here, it's best if we can take that whole big expression and drop it into our calculator at once. We're far less likely to make a mistake if we can dump that into our calculator in one go. So we're going to have 240 squared plus 180 squared minus 2 times 240 times the cosine of 100. Close that off. And it's going to be a big number. Yeah, 90,083.35. So I'll come back here. 90,083.35. So 90,083.35. And you might think, hokey, that seems too big. Well, it clearly is way too big. There's no way we could make a triangle with that length of side on it with these two other sides. But notice this is x squared, so we don't want x squared, we want x, so we're going to have to root both sides. So we're going to root each of those sides, come back here, and we're going to take the square root of this, and you can type it in however you want, I get fancy, and we're going to find out that it is 300.14 meters. So x is equal to 300.14 meters. So we know that this distance here is 300. 0.14 meters. Okay, so that is how far apart those boats managed to get after two minutes while one was traveling at 1.5 meters per second and one was traveling at two meters per second. Okay, all good. Let's try another one pretty much identical to that. So imagine the following. So just partition that. There we go. So what we have is um, two students. are in a field chatting side by side. Uh, student A, make that uppercase, student A runs do north at 4.5 meters per second. Student B runs at a little bit faster, how about six meters per second. And we're gonna put another direction in here. 15 degrees north of east. After five minutes, how far apart are they? Okay, so that's enough information for those of you that are comfortable with directions like that. Give that one a whirl. If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you set up this triangle, but then I'd like you to pause it and, um, and then try it on your own. Okay, so let's look at this. So we got two students, you know, here they are, two students in the field, side by side. It says student A runs due north. Well, hopefully we know the arms of the compass. Never eat shredded wheat. So if we got a kid here and they run due north, okay? So this kid is running due north, so straight up. And they run at 4.5 meters per second for five minutes, okay? So 4.5 meters per second times five minutes, but remember that in each minute is 60 seconds. So we can grab our calculator and figure out just how far that student was capable of running. Okay, so this is going to be 4.5 times 5 times 60. That student was able to run 1.3 kilometers, so 1,350 meters. So this side length is 1,350 meters. Now, the next one's a little bit tougher. So it says student B runs at six meters per second. This is where it gets interesting. The, I'm gonna grab a different color here. 
15 degrees north of east. So I would encourage you to always draw like a compass like this on your page. Um, and so this is east. So if they're running due east, this is the direction they'd be going, okay? But they're not going east. They're going 15 degrees north of east. So that means that they're kind of going like this direction here. And that little thing in there is 15 degrees. Okay, so this angle in here is 15 degrees. So if I come back over here and we say, all right, that means that this student ran like this. Now, we have to be careful, okay? So this angle isn't 15 degrees, right? If I take and I grab a different color here, um, and I said, here is due east, whatever. Uh, so this angle is 15 degrees. What we're really interested in knowing is, well, one of the things, is what this angle here is. Well, north and east, just like north and west, would form a right angle. So this angle in here is going to be 90 minus 15 degrees. So this angle is going to be 75 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? So this said 15 degrees north of east. So here's east, and we go 15 degrees north of east, okay, and that's the direction we're going to be going. And what we found is we found this angle in here is 75 degrees. So there's my 75 degrees. Now we also need to know just how far this student ran. Well, this student runs six meters per second times five minutes times uh, 60 seconds per minute. Um, and what we're going to get here, well, we're going to grab a calculator and we're going to do, well, I mean, I guess that's 1800 meters. I can just do that in my head. Okay. So this is 1800 meters. Okay. So 1800 meters. Okay. So there it is set up. And what we want to know is we want to know how far apart these students ended up being. Okay. So what we are really interested in finding out is we want to know what is that length right there. Okay. So go ahead. If you're still with me and you haven't figured this question out, pause the video and solve for this unknown and come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back. Um, again, triangle decision tree. Do we know two angles? No, we don't. Uh, do we know if it's a right angle? Doesn't really look like it, but we don't know if it is, so we have to assume that it isn't. Do we have a known angle opposite a known side? Still no. So that means cosine law. So we're gonna do C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus two AB cosine of uppercase C. Put the C on the angle we know or want to know. There it goes right there. Means that's little C. That means that this is going to be little A and little B. I don't even really need to label off the corners because I'm not going to use them. So we're going to have that X squared is equal to, and we're going to fill in the other bits here. So A is 1350 squared plus B is 1800 squared minus two times, I don't know if I have myself enough room here, 1350 times 1800 times the cosine of 75 degrees okay lovely we're going to dump that whole shooting match right here into our calculator and again doing it all in one go is safer than not so we're going to have 1350 squared plus 1800 squared minus 2 times 1350 times 1800 times the cosine of 75 degrees. And we type that in big, big number. So 3,804,639. I got to look at that a couple times. 3,804,639. 3,804,639. Oh, dang it. 639 point. What was it? Point four four. Point four four. Okay, lovely. Huge number. Obviously not the right number. We're not done yet. We're going to square root both sides. We're going to end up with x is equal to, come back here and take the square root of that. So x 1.5, 1950.55. Okay, so this comes back here and we're at 1950.55 meters. So they end up almost two full kilometers apart. So 1950.55. Five meters apart. Okay, 
not a good practice. So let's try another one. Uh, we're going to do one a little bit differently this time, or a little different style. Uh, imagine the following scenario. So I've even got green, which is lovely. So we're going to have a handsome tree. Looks like a Whoville Christmas tree. Um, and then... No, I really want that to be straight. Try that again. There we go. Okay, so now what we've got out here is we have our good man Cam. Here's Cam. Cam is out walking through the woods, enjoying himself. Okay, so here's Cam in the woods. Cam is curious to know just how tall this tree is. So Cam, being ever the Boy Scout that he is, has with him a clinometer as well as a tape measure. So what a clinometer does is it tells us how far from horizontal an angle is. So Cam, what he does is he looks at this tree from where he is standing. And when he looks up at this tree, okay, so he gazes up to the very top of the tree, and he knows that there's an angle called the angle of incline. Angle of incline is how far up from the horizon you look. So Cam measures with his clinometer and sees that the angle of incline, and so I'm going to add in, um, kind of hard to, I don't have a dotted line, but imagine that this is the horizon here. So Cam's angle of incline from the horizon up, so this angle right here, he measures that as 11 degrees. Okay, so he's got an angle of incline of 11 degrees. Now, Cam carefully walks forwards 20 meters. Okay, so then Cam walks ahead 20 meters. So here's Cam again, 20 meters further along. And he does the same thing again. He looks up at the tree. Okay, so I'm going to draw in a line there. So he looks up at the tree. And this time he measures his angle of incline. Okay, and the angle of incline this time is 24 degrees, so 24 degrees. So we know that this distance here, from here to here, we said was 20 meters. Okay, um, so that's 20 meters. Uh, what we want to know is we want to know what is the total height of this tree. That's what we're after, it's the total height of the tree. Now. Cam, Cam is, we're going to say that Cam's eye level, where's my pen? No, my pen did? Okay, there it is. Cam's eye level is 1.6 meters above ground. Okay, so Cam's eye level is 1.6 meters above the ground. So the question is, how tall is this tree? Now, this is a heavy duty question. If you think you know how to do this, have at it. That's amazing. Um, and if you don't, awesome, we're going to work to it. Okay. So here we go. So it doesn't really seem like we've got all that much information. It doesn't seem like we have anywhere near enough information to figure out how tall this tree is. But what we do know is we know a few things. Well, we know that this triangle or this side on the triangle, it's not explicitly written in there, but I mean, we can make this deduction pretty quickly, is that this is also 20 meters. So we're gonna deal with this triangle right here, right? This is the triangle we're gonna deal with to begin with, which isn't even this piece, but I'll explain in a minute how we're gonna do that. So this 24 degrees isn't inside the triangle, but luckily for us, we all remember from, I don't know, grade seven or eight, that the degrees in a straight line, Brianna, how many degrees are there in a straight line? 180. Yay, my daughter knew. Okay. So we know that this straight line makes 180 degrees. So if I want just this angle in here, I can do 180 minus the 24. So you can grab your calculator if you need to and do, oh, that interior angle is going to be 180 minus 24 is 156 degrees. Okay. So we know that this angle is 156 degrees and you might wonder well who cares well here's why that's important 
if we look at this, if we go through our triangle decision tree again, right? So I'm thinking about this triangle right here to begin with. Triangle decision tree. If we know two angles, find the third. Well, look what we've got. We've got 156 here. We've got 11 here. That means we know two interior angles. We can figure out what this angle is. So I'm going to do that. That's really important that we do that right off the bat. Okay. So we're going to do 180 minus 156 minus 11. And we're going to find out that that angle up in that corner is 13 degrees. So we know that this angle in here is 13 degrees. Okay, good. Then we go through our triangle decision tree. Is it a right triangle? Well, definitely not. We got 156 degrees, not a right triangle. And then we say, do we have a known angle opposite a known side? Well, it's kind of a, such a skewed triangle, it's not all that easy to see, but we actually do have a known angle opposite a known side length. There it is right there, okay? So that means we can use sine law. Now, we know all three angles, so clearly we're not looking for angles. I'm going to put an M and an N on there as the side lengths that we might be interested in. And this is a type of problem that, you know, I have practice, so I know what I need to do, but you might not. So we're looking for side lengths. So I'm going to go with A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over the sine of C. So fill everything in. Well, I haven't put the variables on. So A, B, C, which means that's little C, that's little B, that's little A. So let's fill these in. So A is going to be 20 over the sine of 13 degrees equals M over the sine of 11 degrees equals N over the sine of 156 degrees, okay? So lovely, what we're gonna do now is we're going to say, well, we have a complete ratio, which is good, right? There's my complete ratio. And I can solve for either M or N. Now, while it's not wrong to solve for n, I can tell you in problems of this nature, we don't actually need to get that side length. I'm not going to take off any marks if you do that, but we're really only interested in the m. So I'm going to solve for m. So I'm going to take those two and I'm going to rewrite them. So I'm going to put them over here. So we're going to have 20 over the sine of 13 degrees is equal to m over the sine of 11 degrees. Lovely. So all good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to cross multiply here. No, I'm not going to cross multiply. M is being divided by the sine of 11. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of 11. So I'm going to multiply by the sine of 11 degrees. Those guys are going to go away. And we're going to have M is just equal to this. So I'm going to grab my calculator. All good. Uh, calculator here. And we're going to say that this is the sine of 11 times, oh, no, got to close that bracket, times 20 divided by the sine of 13. We do that, we're going to find out that it is 16.96. So that is 16.96 meters, 16.96 meters, meters, M probably shouldn't be used. Anyways, 16 0.96 meters is how long this side is. You might think, okay, well, that's all well and good, Galbraith. How does that help us? On we go. Now, I didn't stipulate this at the beginning, but in this course, trees always grow perfectly perpendicular to the land, which means that if I were to extend this and this like this, what we have here is a right angle. We think, okay, well, how does that help us? Well, I'm going to I'm going to pull that triangle out so it's a little less convoluted. So we just found that A, this is, let's stop that. Um, okay, this is a right angle. And we know from earlier that this angle down in here is 24 degrees. And we know that this side length is 16.96. Now, this red side that we got here, I'm going to maybe call it Y. It's not the complete height that we need, but uh, we won't worry about that yet. Okay, so what we're going to have here 
is that we have a right triangle. So we can actually go back to using Sokotoa because it's a right triangle. So if we think about Sokotoa, theta goes on the angle. We know we want to know. There's my theta. I list off the sides. H, O, A. I'm going to write out H, O, A, and theta. Hypotenuse is 16.96. O is Y. A, we don't care about. And theta is 24. So we write out so ka toa. There's so ka toa. I have O and H means I'm going to use sine. So we have the sine of theta equals opposite, which is Y over hypotenuse, which is 16.96. I should put my theta in there. My theta is 24. So we have the sine of 24 is equal to Y over 16.96. I want to know what Y is. I'm going to multiply both sides by 16.96. Multiply this side by 16.96. Those guys are going to go away, and we're going to get the Y equals. I'm going to grab my calculator and type that in. So 16.96 uh, times the sine of 24. And we find out that that is 6.9 meters. So 6.90 meters. So we know that this side is 6.90 meters. And hopefully now, with some deductive reasoning, you could say we could figure out what X is, right? So if we look and we say this side is 6.90 meters, X is not only going to be this 6.90 but we've also got this nice little piece of 1.6 down here. So X is going to be the sum of those things. 6.90 plus 1.6. So X is equal to 6.90 plus 1.6. And we type that into our calculator and it is going to be 8.5 meters tall. So what we've found is we know that therefore Cam's tree is 8.5 meters tall okay and there we go there is another example of how to do some application of trig problems so i'm going to assign some questions out of the textbook for you to practice with this and we're going to do more of these tomorrow okay thanks bye